I've been working out regularly for the last 10 years. I have made some great progress in my strength, in my muscle growth, and all aspects of my fitness. But I've certainly made many mistakes along the way. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the top five mistakes when it comes to working out that I want you to avoid. It's showtime. Mistake number one is doing junk volume. Junk volume basically means doing an excessive amount of sets and reps beyond what is necessary to stimulate muscle growth and muscle strength. Now, there are different opinions about what is the optimal amount of sets and reps to do, and it also depends a lot on your training goals, your training status, and you know how frequently you train. For example, if your main goal is strength development, then generally your reps per set are going to be somewhat smaller. Usually, the rep ranges for strength development are somewhere between three to six reps per set. But when your goal is hypertrophy training, then the amount of reps per set is also going to be somewhat higher. For example, for hypertrophy, you can go for 6 to 12 reps generally. And anything about 15 reps is going to be more endurance. If you do 3 reps per set for strength training, then you need to do at least 5 to 6 sets to see the proper stimulus for strength training. On the other hand, if you're doing around 8 to 10 reps per set, for hypertrophy goals, then you can get away with only doing three sets in total per exercise. So the magic number between how many reps in total you need to do per week to stimulate the particular muscle you're training for any goal, then it's going to be around 25 reps per week generally. Of course, it's going to vary between the training modalities you do and the training frequency and all those things and your goal, your level of professionalism, etc. But generally, you want to aim for at least like 25 to 30 reps per week per muscle. So for example, if you're doing bench press or squats for 50 or 100 reps per week, then you know a lot of it might be junk volume, meaning that it's beyond what is necessary and it actually can be counterproductive for seeing progress in your goals. The main idea here is that if you're training a lot more than is generally recommended or generally required for the minimal effective dose and you don't see any progress, then you're probably doing too much of volume and you need to dial it down to allow your body to actually adapt and recover from the stimulus. But if you keep seeing improvements and results in the training, even if you're doing a whole lot more repetitions and a whole lot more sets and a whole lot more workouts, then of course, keep going. But if you don't see improvements, then chances are you're doing too much junk volume. Mistake number two is not doing any zone two cardio. Fortunately, I have been doing zone two cardio for the last three to four years quite regularly and quite consistently. But before that, I really didn't do a lot of zone two cardio per se, besides just going for very long walks or hikes. Now, the thing with zone two cardio is that it's actually very beneficial for improving your heart health. Obviously, it's also going to make it much more easier for you to lose fat and stay at a leaner body composition. But the biggest reason why you should do zone cardio is that there is a lot of research coming out right now showing that cardiorespiratory fitness is one of the biggest predictors of reduced all-cause mortality. It has an even greater reduction in all-cause mortality than strength training. And if you're the kind of person who only goes to the gym and they're not doing any zone 2 cardio, then you should definitely add some zone 2 cardio into your regime. Zone 2 cardio is a low-intensity exercise that maintains a heart rate usually between 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. In practice, it means going for a jog, cycling, or swimming at a pace where you can still maintain normal breathing and you don't have to gasp for air. Zone 2 cardio is going to increase your fat oxidation, is going to increase the amount of slow-twitch muscle fibers that you have, and it's also going to improve overall tissue oxygenation throughout the body. The best thing about it is that once your cardio improves, once you do some zone 2 cardio and your cardio gets better, Better, then your lifts are also going to get better because you actually recover faster from the exercise and you're able to pretty much consume more oxygen during your lifts. I mean, the stereotype is that a kind of fat power lifter is lifting, but they get out of breath so fast that actually the limiting factor to their strength training is going to be their cardio. So adding cardio just for the sake of heart health and longevity will also drastically improve your results at the gym. Mistake number three is doing one to two hour workouts. I used to do very long workouts, like one to two hours, practicing different kinds of skill developments, practicing strength development, and just going to failure almost with all the exercises. Nowadays, I only work out with weights maybe 45 minutes per day. And when I do cardio, I usually stick only to 30 to 45 minutes, maybe 60 minutes in max. And my results have actually increased. I've actually built more strength. I've actually built more endurance and more muscle by working out less. You don't need to annihilate your muscles. You don't need to be in complete failure and you don't need to be completely out of breath all the time to see improvements. If you have a good workout plan, 
the targets, the biggest bang for your buck movements, like the compound lifts, like squat, bench press, deadlift, overhead press, barbell rows, pull-ups, and those kind of things, then you don't need to spend hours at the gym. For example, when you're doing biceps curls, you're doing biceps curls, it only targets your biceps, maybe forearms, but it doesn't really target your back that much. It doesn't target your other muscle groups. But when you do things like weighted pull-ups, or if you do barbell rows or deadlifts even, then you're not only training your biceps, you're also training your back, your lats, and many other parts of the body. So in terms of effectiveness and time management, then doing barbell rows is significantly better for your biceps development than doing biceps curls. Of course, you can still add some accessory exercises, like the biceps curl or triceps pushdown or whatever it is, but they should never be like the main focus of your workout, and they should never take any longer than 5 to 10 minutes. Mistake number 4 is always lifting weights while fasted. Fortunately, this was only a short period of my life. I only did it for maybe like a year, during which I primarily worked out fasted. This also led to a plateau in my strength development because of not getting adequate recovery. I know fasting might have a lot of other benefits in terms of cutting down calories or improving other aspects of your biomarkers, but when it comes to seeing maximum results from your workouts, especially with weight training, then you want to have some food in your system, especially some amino acids in your system while you're working out. With higher amounts of amino acids in your blood while working out, you essentially reduce the amount of muscle catabolism you experience and at the same time you promote additional muscle anabolism. In total, what it means is that you're going to be able to build more muscle and you will also be able to build more strength because of having more calories on board. Awesome, I love protein. And the last training mistake is doing too much cardio in zone 3 to 4 and not enough in zone 2 or 5. So I'll give you a brief overview of the cardio zones. Zone 1 is very slow movements, like when you're hiking or walking very fast. It's around 55 to 65 percent of your max heart rate. Zone 2 is the slightly low intensity cardio between 60 to 70 percent of your max heart rate. This is where you build your aerobic base. Zone 3 is a bit more tempo. It's 80 to 85 percent. Zone 4 is the lactate threshold, 85 to 88 percent. And zone 5 is the maximum speed pretty much above 90% of your max heart rate. This is where you're sprinting all out. Now the issue with zone 3 and 4 training is that it doesn't really contribute that much to your max heart rate. It doesn't allow you to increase your VO2 max as much as doing actual zone 5 cardio does. And it doesn't really build your aerobic base the same way zone 2 cardio does. So in my opinion, most of your training should be spent in zone 2 to build up your aerobic base, to build up your fat metabolism, to build up your mitochondria, and to build up your slow twitch muscle fibers. This is going to enable you to have the biggest cardio engine in terms of having a good solid base. And the zone 5 cardio is to train your VO2 max and to push it higher, to push your max heart rate, and to increase your high intensity interval training. But if you train a lot of zone three or four, which is kind of this, it's pretty intense, but you're not burning fat and you're not in the aerobic zone, but it's not intense enough to train the anaerobic zone, then you're always stuck somewhere in the middle that is kind of this no man's land that doesn't really build either of the zones. So most of the training should be done in zone two or zone five. So do low intensity cardio in zone two and then train some high intensity sprints as well. Generally, any exercise is good for you and it will improve your health. But if you have certain training goals and you want to see better results faster, then of course you need to have a good plan and you need to avoid some of the common mistakes. If you do want to slow down aging and live longer, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.